Hmm. Well, from one political leader to another, Keir Starmer has been warned that he risks civil war over attempts to change the voting system for internal leadership elections in his party. He needs union backing and will likely struggle to get rule changes past Labour's executive committee tomorrow without it. Well, Dan Hodges is a political commentator for The Mail on Sunday and joins me now to talk about Keir Starmer's predicament. So, first of all, let's just go over a quick overview of what it is the Labour leader is trying to do in changing this leadership election. Uh, so, there was one member, one vote for Jeremy Corbyn. What's he trying to change? Well, he's trying to, ironically, for uh, someone who, who tries to paint themselves as something of a centrist, he's trying to turn the clock back. So, he's trying to go back to the the days when the Labour le leader was elected via an electoral co college comprised of a third of the electoral college was from votes amongst the trade unions and other Labour Party affiliates. A third was comprised of the votes of ordinary Labour members and a third was comprised of the votes of, of, of Labour MPs. And obviously that was the system that famously um, John Smith set aside in his own bid to define himself as a modernising leader. And as I say, Keir Starmer is, 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 as we understand, attempting to turn the clock back. Now, I say we understand because, frankly, there's a lack of clarity about what Keir Starmer is proposing and also, crucially, what Keir Starmer is prepared to accept. And that's partly why, as you've said, um, we're seeing the backlash from the trade unions. And at the moment, frankly, the whole thing looks like it's turning into a bit of a dog's dinner. This is a bit of a theme for Keir Starmer, isn't it? I mean, when he tried to reshuffle his shadow cabinet and tried to demote Angela Rayner, he ended up giving her all of the jobs under the sun. Now he's trying to change that internal leadership election system. And it seems that he's already rowing back before it's even reached an NEC meeting. What I don't understand here is why, why are the trade unions uh, seeming to uh, be opposed to this? I mean, ultimately, it was the trade unions that massively benefited from the old system. There were huge uh, criticisms of that system for making sure that Ed Miliband won uh, over David Miliband. He won off the back of trade union votes rather than member votes. Surely the trade unions would love going back to that system. Well, you would think so, but I mean, I think there are a number of things. Firstly, obviously, the power balance has shifted over the last few years within the Labour Party. Obviously, we've seen the ascendancy of the Corbynite left, and the Corbynite left are still influential within those trade unions. I mean, I think equally, in fairness to the trade unions, from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, these proposals, it seems, were basically bounced on on the trade unions. They seem to have been bounced on trade unions that would instinctively be sympathetic to Starmer without any of the sort of the normal, um, you know, private behind the scenes discussions and politicking that would normally be associated with a significant um, rule change of, of, of this kind. And frankly, from what I'm from what I'm seeing and what I'm, again, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, Starmer's team appear to have messed this up. You know, they just haven't put in the groundwork. They haven't actually got everybody squared off. They haven't squared off the people they need to get squared off. They don't seem to have come close to getting the people they need to be squared off. Um, they had a meeting yesterday in, w in which one of their supposed key allies didn't even turn up. There are now questions about whether he'll get this through the NEC on Friday before we even get to conference. So I, I, I think it's a, on one level, it's, it's a sort of a, 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 a sort of a rather arcane in, piece of internal labour politics, but it does send a broader message. And the broader message is, you know, St Keir Starmer and his team just aren't on top of this stuff at the moment. And they have to be on top of it because this is obviously a very, very, very important conference that we're, we're, we're approaching. We're hearing that the General Secretary of the Unite Union, the largest trade union, is not going to bother going to Labour conference this year. We're hearing messes around procedure like this, probably a big spat at the NEC tomorrow. Has Keir Starmer spent too much time writing a 14,000 word essay and not enough time trying to work out how to smoothly run his own party? Well, I mean, I, again, I'm slightly at a loss to understand what he thought he was trying to achieve with his 14,000 word essay i mean as i said this morning i think i think the most significant thing about it is that keir starmer for some reason thought that the 14,000 word essay for the fabians 
was the best way of starting to set out his stall to the Red Wall and, and, and the country. I mean, he started off perfectly sensibly by saying, I'm going to go round the country. I'm going to listen. I want to speak to ordinary people. But then he comes back, and the, the, the first thing he does after that listening exercise is to say, right, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to share what I found with the Fabians. Now, that doesn't scream to me of a Labour leader who gets it. It doesn't seem to me it's a, it's a leader who understands how to engage with the public. Fabian pamphlets may have cut the mustard in the 1930s. They're not going to cut it in the 2020s. And I, I, again, I, I just don't understand where the politics is here. You know, we all know what, what what, what Keir Starmer's negatives are perceived to be. He's perceived to be a typical North London intellectual leader who can't connect with Labour's old heartlands. Why on earth you decide to go through this, this you know, Fabian pamphlet route is beyond me. Well, Dan Hodges, thank you so much for giving us your opinion on this whole mess.